Hello everyone. Welcome to Pharma Thoughts. Episode 6 The Sulfonylamide Tragedy. In the previous videos, we have seen that a book called The Jungle has played a very important role in the creation of a new law. And because of that book, the first, the Pure Food and Drug Act, was established in 1906. However, soon the FDA has identified that the new law which was created was not adequate as per the current requirements and FDA has proposed a complete revision to the existing law. A bill was even introduced in the Senate in 1933 proposing all the revisions, but government did not take any action till the sulfonylamide tragedy that occurred in 1937. So in today's episode, we will try to review the tragic events of sulfonylamide disaster. So let's start the, let's start the episode. Sulfonylamide Sulfonylamide is an antibacterial drug and it is used effectively to treat the streptococcal infections and this drug was taken in the form of powder or tablets and it was being used very effectively for quite some time. Mr. Gerhard Domak and his team was credited for the discovery of medicinal properties of sulfonylamide for, and for this discovery he, he has received Nobel Prize in 1939. Actually, the history of sulfonylamide drug itself is a very interesting story. This drug has its roots in the dice manufacturing industry. But today we will not discuss about the history of this drug. Today, instead, uh, we will try to review the unfortunate tragedy that was associated with this drug. Sulfonylamide. As said previously, sulfonylamide was a very popular drug which was taken in the form of powder or tablets and was being used safely for some time. Doctors, this, this, uh, doctors prescribed this drug confidently and patients got cured well. In June 1937, one salesman of a company called SC Messenger has reported a high demand for this drug in southern states in liquid form. We know that this drug was available in tablet form and tablets are suitable for adults or patients who can swallow them, whereas children or infants cannot swallow the tablets as such. So, normally drugs in the form of liquids, for example, tonics and syrups are prepared for children. As uh, this drug was not available in uh, tonics or syrup form, there was a huge demand in the liquid form. Many companies tried to capture the pediatric market, that is the market for children, but could not succeed because sulfonylamide is a drug that is not soluble in any of the known solvents. And in order to prepare a solution, the drug must be soluble in some solvent, but here it is not the case. However, the companies, the SC Messenger company's chief chemist, Mr. Harald Watkins, was trying to find out a suitable solvent that can dissolve sulfonylamide. And after much research, finally he discovered that the drug was soluble in a solvent called diethylene glycol. So he prepared the solution, he tested the solution for flavor, appearance and fragrance and it was found good. Management was happy that he has succeeded in uh, preparation of sulfonylamide solution. And after the management gave permission to sell the material, 240 gallons of solution was manufactured and shipped in September 1937. And unfortunately, no safety studies were done on the drug as it was not a mandatory requirement by the existing law of 1906 and here is a picture of uh, the sulfonylamide bottles the sulfonylamide elixir how it was sold in 1937 what happened with this what is the result unfortunately more than 100 people died and most of them were children because we we know that this drug in the liquid form was mainly intended for children so most of the victims were also children and what, if, what was the reason? The reason was not the sulfonylamide drug. Sulfonylamide as such was a very good drug. It was proven. But the reason was the solvent diethylene glycol which was used in the preparation of this solution. Diethylene glycol is a deadly poison and harmful effects of this solution are known at that time. Even the literature which was existing Though no studies were conducted, the literature which was existing stated that the diethylene glycol has some harmful effects, but those were not taken care to taken into account while preparing this solution. A simple study could have proved that 
this drug was not safe as the law did not require law as the law did not mandate for such a study the company did not perform any such study and this uh, this has resulted in the deaths of 107 people so aftermath so once the effects deadly effects of this drug are known the food and drug administration has put its entire staff on field practically 239 members of the fda inspectors of the fda 239 fda inspectors were on field the aim was only to recover the distributed solution it was a very tough job communication was not as fast as we see today imagine 1937 today we are in 2018 so the communication was not as fast as what we see today and fda inspectors took the help of police the police roamed the streets in the police vans and communicated through loudspeakers and most of the times prescriptions were not filled so it was very difficult to trace out the person who took the medicines the prescriptions uh, issued to the by the pharmacist were half filled like only the name of the patient mary 58 the age or john 42 but where they do where they reside or the address of the patient were not at all filled and that created much trouble and one of the inspector postponed his wedding only to help in retrieving the drug most of the doctors were reluctant to help fearing that they may be prosecuted for prescribing this drug and another problem was that the doctors were worried because they have prescribed this drug and because of which people have died so they were worrying that the case may be on them the case may be put on them so they may be charged with the case so they were uh, not uh, fully helping in one case an fda inspector found a person died after consuming this drug and as per the customs or the rituals of the deceased patient they buried the patient and all the items that were last used by the patient were all left at the burial ground and of once he, the inspector has known this with the help of the relatives of the deceased patient inspector went to the burial ground and found the bottle which was still containing enough liquid to kill few more people uh, such uh, so, um, it it is really a big story and how the retrieval has happened and after so many efforts out of 240 gallons that were distributed 234 gallons and one pint was retrieved rest of the solution was consumed and caused so many deaths uh, with so much efforts they could retrieve almost all the rest of the drug that was distributed and dr samuel evans messenger or dr sc messenger who was the owner of this company later stated that they do not feel any responsibility for this incident as everything was done legitimately they did not do anything wrong as per the legal requirements they did not go against the law they did as per the legitimate requirements so he did not feel uh, uh, responsible for this incident the company was prosecuted and was fined for 26000 which was the maximum punishment that could be given for mislabeling uh, what was the charge what uh, the company were charged was for mislabeling why it was mislabeling because the drug was called an elixir and when a drug is called an elixir it should contain ethyl alcohol as a solvent not diethylene glycol so uh, all the thi- all the thing the government can do was to prosecute the company only for mislabeling and the maximum fine for mislabeling was $26000 and they they posed it legally that was the only mistake the company did instead of saying elixir has it said the solution even the this could not have been fined for them irony of the story is that the chemist mr harald watkins who prepared this solution has committed suicide and the outcome what was the outcome After this tragedy the Congress has passed the FDC Act of 1938 which included the revisions that were proposed to the existing 1906 law and this was nothing this was not new actually the FDA has proposed this in 1933 but almost for 5 years the government did not take any action and only after a tragedy the duckard in 1937 the government has revised the existing law and in 1938 they published the FDC Act. One of the new requirements as per this new law was 
to provide safety and also to mention the list of ingredients on the label. Today we can see the list of ingredients on a toothpaste or a lip balm and all that that is the result of this particular tragedy of this law. And another requirement was to come was that the companies to prove that their products are safe before marketing. Now it is the responsibility of the companies to ensure that their products are safe before they release into the market. So these were the two major requirements of this act. And only after such a big tragedy which took hundreds of lives the government realized and modified or revised the existing law and brought in more controls so such is the story of this uh, disaster so we need to follow the rules and uh, regulations if not such a disaster can occur again these are the reference links that are used in the preparation of this present you can visit the same for more information on this topic and thank you for watching the video if you have any suggestions or you need any clarifications please write to us at pharmathoughts1 at gmail.com thank you and have a great day